some clarifications for Mr. Freeman because he still seems incapable of understanding my position. My position is not that the state is inherently good or inherently bad. My position is the state is inevitable. There is no nation that has ever existed for any period of time without a state of some sort. Somalia, it's full of warlords, or I don't know what you want to call them, local despots rise to power on their force of will, on their charisma, on the backing of people with guns. Every state, every nation ever has had a government. There's no way around it, James. That's what people do. People look for leaders. People look for leadership. We are social animals. Dogs develop a pack hierarchy. There's an alpha male, and then everybody else kind of falls in line behind the alpha male and the alpha female. Because dogs are social animals. They can't help it. We can't help it either, James. Even your beloved constitution, which you treasure yet fail entirely to understand, is an artifact of the state. A group of representatives from various colonies got together, various states, and they wrote this to be a governing document over their new nation. Everything that's flowed from that, including all the judicial rulings and opinions that have defined and determined what various aspects of that constitution mean, are artifacts of the state. The car you're driving is an artifact of the state. It is molded by the state. Whether it's for good or for bad, that is the way it is. So when you call me a statist, you're saying that I understand that number one, there is a state. And number two, that armed men with guns will enforce the will of the state. Do you, James, believe otherwise? Do you believe there is no state, James? Do you believe that armed men with guns won't enforce the will of that state? You know full well they will. They're doing it right now to bow. They're going to be doing it to you soon. Or they've done it multiple times that we've seen on camera. The state exists. Whether you like it, whether you agree with it, it exists. It enforces the laws of its, that it's chosen to run it. It, it enforces those laws for good or for ill. You refusing to believe that those laws exist or work or are good doesn't change a damn thing. You've never asked me what laws I agree with. I mean, we, we both know sitting here right now that I disagree strongly with inland border control checkpoints. I've also spoken out against DUI checkpoints and other ID stops that are suspicionless. I am strongly against them. But that doesn't mean that I somehow doubt their authority or legality or believe they don't exist or have the power to make me stop. Even you understand that the Border Patrol has the power to make you stop because you stop there. We both agree that you shouldn't and are under no obligation to answer their questions 
But we also both understand that they are entitled to, because of the Supreme Court rulings, they are entitled to ask. I don't think there's as big a gulf between us as you want to make out, James. The biggest gulf between us is that I understand how the state works. You go around harassing police officers trying to get them somehow to get Bao out of jail because you're completely bass awkward ignorant on how the system works. I understand how the system works. The police officers understand their role in the system. Maybe they don't, don't have a full grasp of entirely how all the pieces fit together, but they at least understand their position in it. Their position in it is to enforce the laws, not to determine which laws are just or unjust, but to enforce the law. They have done their job as soon as they put bow behind those bars. That's it. He's done. It's not up to him anymore. It doesn't matter that you want to characterize to him that Bao is some sort of a political prisoner. That is so meaningless. It's retarded. Oh, oh, some random guy walks up to me on the street and claims that somebody inside of that building is being held as a political prisoner. Oh, well, gosh, golly, I should just listen and believe. I'll just pull my gun, run in there and just start shooting all the other police officers who I also know are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing by keeping Bao inside there until he's been adjudicated, until his, until his sentence is up for contempt, until his bond hearing is resolved. Or if they've already determined he doesn't get bond, then until his case is adjudicated and he's either sentenced or released. You're, I, I understand you're doing it for camera views because, well, I mean, you talk about, you talk about how you get your super chats and, oh, YouTube takes 30%. Oh, life is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> or they get interest on that on that 70% that they're holding for you for the month. Oh my God, you guys are geniuses. You never stop to consider, consider the fact that YouTube actually loses money, that they spend a fortune on the bandwidth that you take advantage of to stream on the servers that hold and distribute your data on all the electricity and space requirements to run those servers, store those servers, cool those servers, all the support personnel required to keep those servers running, replace bad hard drives, do all the updates, all the software engineers. Oh, they're keeping 30% for the service that is otherwise amazing and awesome. You guys are like children. You have no concept of how things work. You just rail against everything that in any way seems to affect you negatively. Oh, they're keeping 30%. They're giving me this platform to work off of for free. Hmm. But they're keeping 30% because, I don't know, they're just jerks. No, it's because they actually want to be able to pay for the system and services they're providing you. You just, you just see, you're just myopic. You see just this tiny little speck of this vast tapestry of how everything works together. And, and you just get blinded by it. Oh, I don't understand. So tyranny. Anyway, James. I do believe the government is overreaching. I do believe there's too much. But I also understand that reasonable minds can reasonably disagree on where to draw the line of what is too much and what is enough. And I don't have a particular need to call people who draw the line at a different spot than me statists or 
I don't know. I, I see comments in my comment section about libtards now. I, all right. I mean, I, I kind of thought the first amendment was, and, and public photography was something that should be available to conservatives and liberals, fascists and anarchists and communists and everybody. But I, I guess it's a it's a libtard thing. I don't know. Anyway, James, I hope you pull your head out of your ass at some point in time. You're smart enough. You should be able to get a better grasp on how things interplay. I would suspect you actually do understand, which is why you knew you needed a license and why you put the disclaimer in that you said you put in about don't try this at home kids with the license and the traveling. I think you understand better than you let on. I think you're playing to the stupid people for their shekels. That is another tale old as time. People taking advantage of the stupid and weak minded. But I guess there are only so many hours in the day and so many battles I can fight, so I'll have to let that particular one go for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.